In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, taking a look at a very, very cold period of time with multiple snowfall opportunities, including one happening today and a couple more coming up pretty soon. So we're going to be diving into all of these things today. And before we really do, I just want to really express how thankful I am for you guys. Yesterday, I told you guys about how my buddy had passed away. You guys showed up and showed out on the GoFundMe and raised around $2,500 for this grieving mother who really, really needs it. And we went to a candlelight vigil yesterday. It was beautiful. And she was in tears seeing those donations flowing in. It just was such a sense of relief for her. And I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Uh, now, let's just, with all that being said, dive into the upcoming pattern. You guys are absolutely amazing. Uh, I just got to say that. Thank you so much. Let's take a look here at the snowfall event happening today. And we can see as we reach the night hours, we see from North Carolina, Virginia, up into the mid-Atlantic and even into southern New England, a lot of snowfall occurring. This is around 7 p.m. I do expect if you're watching the playoff game today, between the Patriots and Texans, you will see some snowflakes at points during the game, maybe the entire time. But the chance continues to grow as that game goes on. So it's going to become more and more of a factor. Uh, and as a Patriots fan, I'm certainly hoping there is snow flying. And as an, a football fan and weather fan in general, I think it would be a cool thing. So we will see what happens with that. But it does look like snow is a really, really good possibility. There's already some flakes around for uh, the Massachusetts area. So definitely going to be an interesting situation. It definitely looks to overperform for Jersey, New York City, Long Island, and then southern New England, where generally people are calling for two to four inches of snowfall, I think, there might be some three to six inch pockets in there. And for areas in southern Massachusetts where I expect the bullseye to potentially be, I wouldn't be surprised if we cross over six inches of snowfall. So a pretty moderate plowable snowfall event for some folks uh, turned into an interesting situation. That one moves out. And as we've been talking about, Monday the 19th is extremely cold. Tuesday the 20th is very, very cold as well. And as we keep going, we get a clipper system starting out for midweek. And this will bring some snowfall to the northern plains, upper Midwest, Great Lakes, and even Ohio Valley here. As a minor to moderate snow system, as you can see, this does eventually, by the time we're reaching Wednesday into Thursday, bring some snow showers up there in the northern mid-Atlantic and even into the uh, kind of northeast corner of the nation. So something to watch for as we move forward. Uh, but our next real big threat is going to be starting out on Friday the 23rd here, where we talked about this actually just yesterday. But we have a lot of these threats that just kind of grow from moisture moving from the Gulf over towards the deep south and southern plains. And we see a lot of Arctic air diving southward as well. And we start to see some wintry weather developing just to the east of the Rockies in states like Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Texas, and even eastern Colorado. As time goes on, we will find that this becomes an actual very, very impactful winter storm. Again, you've got a really nice flow of Gulf moisture moving northward into these areas. You've got a solid air mass of Arctic air diving southward, and that energy is just kind of clashing. You're getting a ton of moisture, a ton of cold air, and this leads towards a big-time winter storm. This is still around six days away, seven days away almost, so we will continue to track this. This has been still changing quite a bit from model run to model run but the trend here recently has been this becoming more and more of a major factor we see heavy snowfall across oklahoma kansas missouri arkansas tennessee parts of kentucky here uh overnight saturday into sunday this is actually 7 p.m on saturday we see a lot of ice as well here texas oklahoma arkansas louisiana mississippi alabama georgia south carolina tons and tons of ice as well and as we keep going, this does become a pretty massive winter storm for the southeast and mid-Atlantic as well as we get some ice down there for Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and some snowfall here across the Smoky Mountains and then northeastward into northern North Carolina and areas of Virginia, even stretching northward into the Delmarva and southern New Jersey here. Over time, we do see this one move out. And then we're going to be watching for more potential storms just like this one. Let's go ahead and keep going into the pattern. We remain cold. We do get some northern energy becoming more a part of our pattern as a very deep diving clipper system starts to move into areas in the plains and Rockies here. We'll have to see if this can latch on to some of that Gulf moisture and give us a similarly intense system. And it kind of does. Uh, a little bit further eastward this time around, we see this northern energy kind of swing through. 
again the plains midwest and then into kind of like the southeast corner and then the flow from the gulf instead of directly northward is almost northeasterly so we get this kind of combination here with a west western piece of energy and an eastern piece of energy this is going to kind of come down to the wire just like this weekend did where are we going to see this energy really come together which would likely result in a major snow system especially with this much cold or are we going to see these two pieces of energy split the entire way around which would likely lead to a more minor to moderate snow event looking towards uh the long range here this is actually beyond 10 days out so this has some time to go, a lot of time to change, but that's your main two scenarios with this storm signal as well as the Arctic air that will be in place. And let me tell you, this is some strong Arctic air. We're seeing snowfall for the deep southeast. Again, areas in the southern mid-Atlantic and south of the Ohio Valley. This is a deep diving system, deep diving cold, and we likely have below freezing lows in northern Florida and areas of southern Georgia just to kind of put it in perspective. This ends up becoming a nor'easter, uh, so they do actually combine here on this European model run, but this storm generally starts to move more and more offshore as it moves northward, which with this current threat in mind, like let's pretend this was only, you know, 24 hours away, you would be watching uh, the Virginia, North Carolina area particularly. Now, if this starts to hug the coast a little bit more, you start to get more northern areas involved, and these are certainly things that can change. Uh, as we progress through the pattern and get deeper into it. So with it being so far out, we're open to all possibilities at this point. We remain cold, but we do get milder over time as we head into the early February time frame. But as I said yesterday, this is so far out, 360 hours out, that it's not really a huge, huge signal yet for a pattern change. And we've seen at times the models want to show that cold just flow straight into February through the end of the model run. So I'm not feeling super confident in it yet, but it is a time frame to watch for potential change as of now. Again, right as we transition from January into February. Now, looking at the GFS model, we do see a little bit more snowfall along the mid-Atlantic and uh, southern New England areas from today's system. So some big changes already as of today. We get that clipper system moving through, again, the Midwest, Great Lakes into the Northeast. And then for the late week time frame, we do get a very similar system starting to take place. Again, this is right around when we see that Gulf energy moving northward and that Arctic air moving southward, and they kind of just clash here. And similarly, we get some heavier snowfall and a lot of ice involved with this system. So kind of good agreement. The main thing that I see different here from the GFS model for this potential system, again, as we're approaching the late week of this upcoming week, is the GFS model is much further to the south with it, which is a classic signal. You guys have probably heard me say this before, but the GFS tends to put things a little bit too far to the south. Keep that in mind as we watch this, because when you take in mind that bias, it kind of appears like they're showing a very similar thing. We see it kind of move across, but in this instance, we get Northern Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina in the bullseye, and it doesn't even make it into Tennessee, Kentucky, or Virginia. So it's a, it's a good 100 to 200 miles further south than what the European model was showing, but for the GFS, that's a little bit of a red flag that maybe we're too far south with this projection and even with what the European model showed, I wouldn't be surprised that this thing trended further northward where we start to talk more about the Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic and maybe Southern New England over time. It's still six days out, so there's plenty of time for trends like that to occur. Wouldn't surprise me, would not surprise me one bit. As we keep going, again, we get a little bit quieter. We do see another Southern system trying to take shape here. as so we reach early that next week and this is still within 10 days. We see some snowfall for Oklahoma, Arkansas, Clearly some Gulf energy being infused, but it's just not able to make its way eastward. It kind of breaks up before it does, but we'll mark this as kind of a time frame of potential and it almost wants to become a nor'easter here. It just kind of fails to do so. And we can tell there's an upper low here that's much stronger, a weaker low offshore. So this really just doesn't combine. And this is what we were talking about earlier. If it doesn't combine, you get this kind of light to moderate snowfall event with a lot of the moisture separated from that area of snowfall. If all of that was combined, it would be a much heavier event likely for these areas. So keep that in mind. Uh, and then as we move through the pattern, we do actually get another winter storm trying to take shape right around the early February timeframe. So again, the European model is saying, hey, once February's here, we're warming up. Uh, it's not going to be cold anymore. The GFS model says, hey, there's another winter storm and plenty of cold for this time frame. So huge disagreement there. Although this doesn't really match up with the cold perfectly. When we're looking at 324 hours out, 
we're only paying attention to is there cold air, which this gets a check mark, yes. Is there a strong low offshore? Check mark, yes. So you have the two ingredients that we can actually look for at this range anyway. Uh, all the other details have plenty of time to go back and forth, probably a hundred times between now and then. Looking at the total precipitation on the European model, we could tell where the flow is coming from. It's coming from the Gulf, and it's kind of moving across this deep south area here, uh, just like that. Now, will some of this trend further west onshore and bring us more snowfall threats? That's the big question mark at this point. And also, will some of this northern stuff be in the form of snowfall or at least wintry precipitation, which is becoming more and more likely as we move forward on these models? The temperature pattern, we're dealing with a decent cool down right now that's supporting this Sunday system. We get much colder like we've been talking about for Monday, Tuesday, where we're dealing with temperatures 15, 25 degrees or more below normal, which is very, very substantial. As we move forward, we get an even more major one as we're approaching late this upcoming week. Thursday the 22nd, it starts to move in. Friday the 23rd, it's really moving in. And we're looking at temperatures that are 30, 35, or even 40 degrees below normal here for the Plains. Midwest, Great Lakes, where you can imagine this would be extremely unsurvivably cold temperatures, obviously if you're outside and you don't have any shelter, uh, but this is just an, an absurdly cold, what we're seeing here on this model, and it continues to look worse and worse, and that sticks around for a while, straight into the early portion of the week following. We stay very, very cold here. I mean, straight through probably a week plus of these really cold temperatures, and finally we warm up for the early February time frame, as we mentioned. Total snowfall. Uh, now, I know this is going to make a lot of Ohio Valley and Mid-Atlantic people very upset. Sorry about this. Again, I do think there's potential for this to trend northward, but we see plenty of snow here for the Northern Plains, Upper Midwest, Great Lakes, and Interior Northeast. And then we see a lot for more of like the Central or Southern Plains into like Tennessee, Kentucky here, and then into the Southern Mid-Atlantic, Northern Southeast area like North Carolina and Virginia. These areas sandwiched in between get almost nothing, uh, but to your north and your south, there's tons of snowfall popping up. Again, still plenty of time to change, but just wanted to point that out. The GFS model is even larger with the disparity because again, this system is further to the south here. Uh, so we see an even larger gap with little to no snowfall in between. Again, still plenty to the north and plenty to the south here. So we're going to continue to monitor these things. I think we're at a very interesting point in the pattern where, again, there's a lot of potential. We have tons and tons of opportunities where there's cold air and a storm to track. So there's going to be more activity coming up, I'm sure of it. And we're going to be talking about it every day. So be sure to subscribe because we do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.